I've got to start with these regulatory concern, uh, concerns because many, many analysts that we've spoken to have said that pharma, biotech are one of the key strategic sectors that could be targeted next. Is that on your radar? Um, well, you know, I mean, I don't know much about uh, tech or education tech. Um, uh, but what I do know is that they're, they have been to this point relatively unregulated industries or sectors um, and obviously the Chinese government's um, you know taking taking steps to to uh, develop those sectors uh, in accordance with their with their with their strategy uh, healthcare and biotech is a is a highly regulated industry um, not just in China but the world over and uh, and so we've we've been operating for the last 20 years in this highly regulated industry and you know there are many reforms there are many changes and for the most part they've been terrific uh, for patients over the last you know five to ten years making oncology drugs available to to many many hundreds of millions of patients for the first time in China so I think I think healthcare and biotech is uh, protected in, to, to some degree due to its well-established regulatory infrastructure. But it's not just about regulation, right? The other side is about profit, which we've seen Beijing take issue with. We saw uh, US-listed Chinese biotech companies drop overnight on account of some of these worries. And one of the main worries is that Beijing will take a look at the sector and potentially want it also to be non-profit. Is that not even an, an out, you know, outlier <laughs> concern for you? Well, I, I think that's ludicrous. Um, I think the you know to, we we in the last we in the last six months have have got two oncology drugs approved. It took us ten years to develop these drugs. Uh, it took us hundreds of millions of dollars to get these drugs to approval. And now these drugs are in the market, you know, changing the lives of patients and and helping people live longer. Um, so that's a long journey and you know one thing that I've seen in uh, from the Chinese government and particularly in the biotech field over the last few years is a total focus on innovation and an effort to broaden the availability of world-class therapies for patients in China you know the Chinese government's trying to make the lives of patients in China better and the lives of its citizens better so when you have an industry that requires such long-term investment and such massive effort to to create to create meaningful therapies that help patients. You know, one of the reasons that the industry's done so well in the last few years is because the Chinese government has reformed to help innovators bring their drugs to market. Of course, mm. there's always going to be a, uh, a level of pressure on pricing. Um, you know, there's a good balance. But in general, what I see is in China, the pressure on pricing in the pharma industry is in the generic space. It's where you have many competitors doing the same thing. In the innovative space, uh, pricing is fair. And, uh, you know, if you want to get on the NRDL, the National Reimbursement Drug List, you've got to take price reductions, but you get access to enormous patient populations. So I think, I think the, you know, the, the track record of strategic and, and, and regulatory reform and pricing reform in the Chinese biotech space and, and, and right. biopharma space has been, has been very, very clever, basically. You mentioned many competitors doing the same thing. Do you expect any consolidation stemming from Beijing's recent regulatory guidelines? Yeah, well, I mean, in the generic drug space, so these are, you know, me too, uh, generic mm. drugs that, that many, many companies manufacture. Absolutely, there'll be consolidation. The volume-based procurement policy of the government really has driven down pricing and made it very difficult for small players to compete. But that's not the area that we're involved in. You know, we're involved in the other end of the spectrum, which is the innovative spectrum, where we're creating novel chemical entities that are actually designed for the global market, not just for the China market. So Chinese biotech companies today, uh, at least a small handful of them, including Hutchmed, are actually trying to bring, you know, homegrown Chinese innovation to the global market. And, and that's new to the world innovation that, uh, you know, there's no competition. I mean, we, we just launched Savalitinib or, or Pathis, uh, which is a lung cancer drug into the market in China. Uh, just this month, and that is the first of its type. It's a first-in-class selective CMET inhibitor for a particular type of lung cancer. Never been seen before in China. Um, and, you know, we, we've had great support 
from the regulatory authorities, bringing that through to patients quickly uh, and, and effectively. Right. So, you know, on the innovation side, I, I think everybody uh, playing in that space is, is in good shape. So let's talk a little bit about Chinese biotech making inroads elsewhere in the world, especially here in the U.S. How much will that help offset some of the cost cuts that you have to, price cuts that you have to swallow in China? I, I'm, not, I'm not of a view that, you know, on the innovative side, again, generics are going to have to take price cuts. But on the innovative side, um, you know, new to the world uh, uh, therapies for patients, mm. you know, there's a market in China for it. The Chinese government is not going to punish innovators for spending 10 years and hundreds of millions of dollars to create, you know, novel therapies that are going to benefit patients in China. They're going to be fair. Um, so I don't see any major concern about, about pricing in China on the innovative drug side. Um, and, and as a result, I don't see our global push as a kind of a counterweight to a declining China market. That's just not the case. The, the reason we're pushing our innovations into the global market is because of the potential of our drugs. You know, we, the, these drugs that we have created in oncology have global differentiation. They're unique. They, they have the ability to compete in the global market. And obviously, while China represents roughly 20% of the world's population, the other 80% require these therapies as well. So a few Chinese companies, uh, Hajmed, Beijing, for example, are pushing very hard to bring these homegrown Chinese innovations to the global market. Christian, this is a broad question for you. If, uh, Taking into consideration what we've seen with the development of COVID vaccines, just this extraordinary coming together of funding from the government, of being aligned with the private sector and pharmaceutical development as well, does this change the nature of how drugs are brought to market in the future? Or is this a, you know, once in a generation thing because of the pandemic? Uh, actually, COVID is a great example of how, how the regulators the world over worked closely with industry to really try to create a solution quickly and cut off years off the, the, the normal amount of time it would take to, to develop a, and, and bring a, a vaccine to market. That's just one example. But if you look at oncology, if you look at cancer over the last 10 years, driven initially by the US FDA's breakthrough therapy guidelines where for the first time back in 2013, 2014, the US FDA started to accept phase two data uh, for uh, drug NDA submission. So phase two being smaller scale studies in oncology where, where those small scale studies would show a high benefit to patients. And, and you know, that took the speed at which uh, companies can bring oncology drugs to the market you know, it improved it massively. Um, instead of eight years of clinical trials, maybe you're talking three, four, five years of clinical trials to get a drug to market. You mm. still have to do confirmatory studies after, but patients can get access to those drugs after phase two. And so the whole, the whole um, pharmaceutical industry is, a moving, is, is evolving very rapidly and all of it driven by trying to meet you know, this pressing unmet medical need of, of patients with, with, uh, with cancer.